Hello everyone, this is Dr. Hauk. I thought I would take a few minutes and go over some essential course information. The sort of thing that I'd be talking about if we were meeting the first day of class. So I'm going to do that and then the second thing I want to do is talk a little bit about the tone of the course because this is anthropology of religion which means something different than uh, theology or uh, a more faith-based approach. All right, first essential course information. I used to have this course set up where we would go through eight different modules, roughly about one a week. But as you can see, if you've gone through the materials, what I've done is I have collapsed uh, two modules together in each case to form a new module. Uh, so now we're covering two, two topics in one module, which means we now have four, a total of four modules. And, and I've done this for the summer because we're covering the same amount of material and you're doing the same amount of work. I just thought it might give you a little bit more flexibility because you might be moving around during the summer. I myself am taking a trip. Um, anyway, so I, I think that'll work better for us for the summer. So yes, it is a pretty big assignment that comes around, but it's, but it's only about once every 13, 14 days or so, which gives you plenty of time. But like I said, it's the same amount of material in my regular course. It's just that uh, it opens it up a little bit and gives you a little bit more flexibility. Remember, the material we're covering is equivalent to the material we cover in a four-month semester course. And we're doing it in eight weeks, which means we're covering the same amount of material in half the time. So roughly it means we're moving twice as fast. So how much time should you be spending on this course? Well, you can do a little calculation. If this were a face-to-face -face course, we'd be meeting for six hours class time every week. So that should be some sort of minimum standard for you. Uh, it may not take you that long, but that gives you some idea of the amount of work in the course and the speed at which we're covering it. The assignments will open when the prior assignment closes. Now, I will open the first one, assignment one, a little early for you to give you a head start. So you'll have I think over two weeks to complete the first module assignment. But after that, the next module assignment will open when the prior one closes. Okay? Uh, due dates. When you see a due date, and please pay special attention uh, to the due dates, um, because there are penalties for late work. And the actual cutoff time would be midnight of the due date. So if you see a due date of June 28th, it means midnight June 28th. Well, technically, the way Moodle is set up, 11.55 p.m. But basically midnight. I mean, if you're a couple of minutes late, it's, it's, it's not that much of an issue for me. Hopefully, you won't cut it that close. Uh, but please, please watch the due dates carefully. They're posted everywhere, probably four or five different places. You can't miss them. I would definitely, if you have any sort of calendar, I would definitely put them all in your calendar now so you don't miss any due dates. The penalty for late work is relatively harsh, so be careful about that. You'll be doing a book summary for your written assignment. All of our upper level courses here at our Franciscan University involve a writing assignment. In this case, it's a book summary, uh, which is really not that arduous of a uh, task. Uh, shouldn't be that burdensome for you. I ask you to pick a book from uh, a list of approved books. You don't have to tell me which one you choose, but just make sure you choose it from the list. And you'll see the list is posted on Moodle. And I would just like to see a summary, a summary of the book. And to save time, I'm asking you to read the first two chapters and the last two chapters and skim what's in between. I realize this is summer 
and, and time is at a premium. Now, if you can read the entire book, uh, fine. Uh, but just to save you a little bit of time, read the first two carefully, the last two chapters carefully, and skim what's in between. Just skim or peruse what's in between. Now, of course, now the summary is going to be of the entire book. Okay? And for more information regarding the book summary, there's a grading rubric set up. Read it carefully. Also, too, make sure you look at the syllabus. And there are formatting instructions, etc. So, so please make sure you consult the syllabus and the grading rubric before you begin this assignment. There is a pre-course assessment that I'd like you to complete for me before you do anything else. If you could click on that link and download it and fill it out. It's 12 multiple choice questions. It won't take you longer than five minutes, if that long. And submit that for me. And this will help me assess the course. Now, when we're done with the course, the last thing I'd like you to do is the post-course assessment. And so please don't forget that later. But for now, please do the pre-course assessment for me. I would appreciate it. It won't take you any longer than five minutes, if that long. Feedback on, I'm reading from a list here, so don't forget anything. Uh, as far as feedback on your work, what I do is I provide a video discussion of the module assignments, which I will post after the due date. So that way you can sit with your hard copy. I'm assuming you're going to be saving your hard copy, the one you submitted. You can sit with your copy and you can go over each question one by one uh, as I discuss them. And then there will also be a midterm discussion video of all the questions on the midterm. Please use Microsoft Word. I'm not necessarily a big fan of Microsoft or anything like that. It's just that it seems to be the most common uh, sort of medium that people are using. Uh, and certainly it works, it works easiest for me. Uh, Adobe is, is kind of a hassle, frankly, on my end. Uh, anything else, a lot of other things I can't even open. So please, Microsoft Word. Uh, do your work in Microsoft Word. Submit it in Microsoft Word. In your module assignments, please use 11-point font. Or, if you need more space, use a 10-point font. Now, the book summary is like a formal written report. So please follow the formatting instruction. There require 12-point font. But for the module assignments, and also two for your exams, 11-point uh, font or 10-point font if you need more space. Now, why might you need more space? Well, uh, it's because of this reason. And this is very, very important. Please make sure the work you turn in is formatted precisely like the original is formatted. So, for example, if question number 24 is at the bottom of page 2 on the, the original, then question number 24 should be on the bottom of the page 2 uh, of the work you submit. Now, I think you figured out what I'm referring to here, although sometimes I wonder because I seem to have lots of strange problems with this, with what appears to be a very, very simple request. Just please, please make sure all of the questions appear in the same place on your work uh, that they do uh, on the original. Uh, that grammar didn't come out too well, but I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Uh, and, and so that's why if you're particularly wordy, uh, you may be pushing questions to the next page kind of thing. Well, go to 10-point font to save space. And then if you notice, for example, that question number 24 should be at the bottom of page 2, but it gets shoved over to page 3, go on page 2 and delete some blank spaces for me and get that question 24 back at the bottom of page 2. Okay, please please follow this for me because it causes so much extra work for me. I'd appreciate if you did that for me. In regard to answering questions, both in the assignments and the exams, this is very important. The course materials are your primary source. Do not look at a term, for example, such as, I'll just 
pick one, existentialism, which we probably don't even have in this course. And then you say, oh, cool. Then you get into Google, type in existentialism, and then read whatever and write down whatever. No. No, that, that is not going to work. That will often not get you full credit. Uh, the reason being is that there, the terms we're using in this course are contextualized vis-a-vis -vis the material of this course. So a great example is materialism. You really need to listen closely to what I am saying about materialism. Because if you Google that, you will might go off on a tangent that gets you into something that's referred to as domestic materialism, which is not something uh, that's relevant to this course. Uh, anyway, general point there, the course materials are your primary source, and you will find all the answers in the course materials somewhere. Okay? I can't stress that enough. When you're typing your answers, I want to see your thoughts written down in your words. Now, I do understand that you'll be reading definitions uh, in the textbook, and uh, you'll hear me talk about things, and that is where you're going to get your ideas from. Fine. But I want you to write these things down in your own words. I want to read your thoughts. Never, ever copy and paste or cut and paste verbatim. Never copy verbatim from anything, from anywhere. Uh, and once again, as I said, I want your thoughts written down in your own words. There's a very harsh penalty for not doing so, so please follow that. And it's pretty obvious. It should be obvious to you why I'm doing this. Uh, because, I mean, if you're just copying and pasting, that's just a waste of everybody's time. Right? But if you're thinking about things and you're figuring out how to put them in your own words, you're really learning the material. Please, please pay attention to that. There is a Ask Questions Here link. I would prefer, rather than emailing or calling me, that you use the Ask Questions Here link. Uh, because no doubt other students may have the same question. But please don't ask me where to find something. Okay, because I've already told you they're in the course materials. So if you've gone through the course materials, you will know where these things are. But I'll be happy to help you with any question. Uh, I'm very generous with hints if you don't understand something. So please use the Ask Questions Here link. If you haven't ordered your books yet, please do so. You've probably seen a few emails by now. Um, but anyway, if you haven't ordered your books, please, please do so. It's very important that you have all of your books at the beginning of, cor of the course because it moves very quickly. In regard to reading, you will have readings assigned for each module, like maybe a, an article or so or uh, a chapter or so. But then there are extra readings that you have to do. So, for example, for the module on Buddhism, which is module two, you'll need to read three chapters out of the book, The Buddha. Uh, and then for the module on Taoism, I think that's module three, you'll be reading the little paperback, The Tao of Pooh. It don't, won't take you very long to read it. But anyway, just plan ahead for your readings. Again, that should probably go on your calendar. Okay, I think that was all I needed to say in regard to essential course information. Now, the second thing I want to talk about was the tone of the course. This is anthropology of religion. It's not theology. So what does that mean? Well, anthropology of religion stresses a few things. Number one, cultural relativism, meaning that no one culture is thought to be the standard whereby others are judged. Right? So in other words, the anthropology of religion is very non-normative, which means it's not judgmental. It takes a very pluralistic view of religions around the world. So if you're studying Hinduism, for example, uh, you would want to do your best to shelve all your biases, forget that you may be a Muslim or a Christian or whatever, 
and learn everything you can about Hinduism and report on it honestly and frankly. So the approach is scholarly in that it's data-based and it's academic which basically means means the same thing you know it's non-judgmental it's pluralistic um, also too it is somewhat agnostic meaning that when you're studying religions as an anthropologist you adopt the point of view that is basically indifferent when it comes to uh, religious dogma issues of faith, the existence of God, things of that nature, because those things really don't concern us. Uh, religion to anthropology, or to anthropologists, is something that happens in this world. So we're not really concerned what people are saying about God or gods, uh, whether they worship gods or not. There are some Buddhists that do not worship God or gods. Uh, all of that's irrelevant. We're looking at religion as it's practiced in this world, a real-world empirical phenomenon. And so that being said, you need to be careful to stay away from personal opinions. So for example, if I were to ask you a question regarding whatever, you would never ever want to start off your answer like this. Well, I was raised a Christian, and as a Christian, blah blah blah. Okay, that, that's a total non-starter. Uh, that will not get you to where we're going. Because really, uh, opinions like that, or personal sentiments, just tell me a lot about where you were born and raised. Which is not really relevant to the issue at hand. I'm asking you to look at these issues objectively as a citizen of the world. I know it's a little bit difficult for some people, and it's certainly a different way of approaching religions for a lot of people, because it's not faith-based. Um, and, it, and it's not sectarian, um, but uh, I'm, I'm asking you to take a sort of broader sort of view, to, to go into the discussion in a very unbiased, objective way. Okay, so please, please remember that and please try to stay away from personal opinions and personal sentiments. And one last thing, another good reason to do that is that you will find that with many religions there is a believer's approach that is primarily mythological and traditional and then there's a scholarly academic approach to religions which is historical, linguistic, sometimes archaeological and there's often a big difference between the two. You'll certainly see that in the case of Judaism when you watch that documentary series that I have posted for you that I think some of you will find pretty fascinating. Okay, well that's it for now. If I left out something that you're still wondering about, please use the Ask Questions Here link. And good luck!